the chairman of the presidential task force, um, honorable ministers, members of the PTF, uh, gentlemen of the press, um, good evening. So um, I'll be taking you through some of the changes that will come as a result of our transition onto phase three of a relaxation of the lockdown process. I will first of all start with general movement. We are modifying the curfew to commence from 12 midnight to 4 a.m. nationwide, effective from 12.01 hours tonight. This does not apply to people on essential services and international travelers that might be returning from abroad. In terms of other aspects of general movement, no formal restriction will be applied within the country, but the risk remains. And therefore, citizens, in particular vulnerable groups, the elderly, those with underlying medical illnesses, are strongly advised to continue keeping away from mass gatherings and the general public and staying at home. Uh, we will be engaging closely with state governments uh, with regards to the issue of compliance, particularly with face masks, because we remain quite concerned about the low level of compliance with this simple intervention measure that we know is quite effective. The Honorable Minister of Aviation will be talking about the process for opening the international airport. We are very pleased that this process has um, gone quite smoothly and we aim to open up our skies on the 5th of September. The, national, the Nigerian International Travel Portal will become live tonight and I would like to specifically thank the private sector, CarCovid, for making this possible. Without them, it would have taken us a much longer period to get through the hurdles. I would also like to thank other government agencies, in particular NITDA, Infrastructure Commission, uh, Concession Regulatory Commission, the NCDC, the FCT departments, and um, other parts of government for coming together to make sure this process is smooth. The key changes when it comes to aviation is the mandatory need for persons coming into the country to have a valid negative COVID PCR result before boarding, and this needs to be valid within 96 hours, preferably within 72 hours of boarding. For land and rail transport, there are no limitations anymore on inter- and intrastate travel, but service providers must abide by status stipulations from the Federal Ministry of Transport and ensure that PPEs are used and where applicable physical distancing is observed. In terms of working arrangements, for the private sector, we will allow the private sector to determine the optimal working capacity within their offices while ensuring enough physical distancing and preserving the health care of workers in their employ. For the public sector, we are maintaining the restriction and encouraging the work at home policy for staff below the level of grade level 12. Those at grade level 12 and above will be allowed to come to work. Um, in terms of communal commercial spaces, including markets, we are removing all restrictions on opening days and limits in stores, but store owners must take responsibility by abiding with non-pharmaceutical interventions and policies to safeguard their staff and patrons of their facilities and we will be working with the FCT and other state governments to make sure that their task forces for compliance continue to be effective um, during this period. For the hospitality and entertainment industry, 
hotels will continue to remain open but observing all non-pharmaceutical interventions. Amusement parks, gyms and cinemas can open but at half capacity. Event centers that provide outdoor spaces can open but not indoor event centers. Eateries and restaurants can only open for outdoor services and we will make sure this is complied with. Bars and nightclubs to remain closed till further notice. Each authority within the states can provide additional guidelines for minimizing risk in their state as it relates to these facilities and uh, industries. For the National Youth Service Corps, the NYSC is to consolidate on safety measures currently being put in place and start preparing for reopening of orientation camps when educational institutions open, when and educational institutions open. And we are in the process of developing uh, strict guidelines to ensure there's no outbreak of COVID-19 uh, when, when, when this process um, starts. For INEC, the PTF continues to work closely with INEC. We are pleased that the last um, elections um, um, that were conducted in Nasrallah State, I believe, were successful. We will continue to partner closely with INEC to ensure that the election process does not pose a risk to, um, to the spread of uh, COVID. Uh, INEC would ensure compliance with the publicized policy on conducting safe elections in the context of COVID-19. In particular, the mandatory use of face mask, no face mask, no voting. Provision of hand sanitizers at polling units, temperature checks at polling units, and observation of physical distancing in all electoral activities. For educational institutions, which includes daycare, primary, secondary, and tertiary care. Educational institutions should be begin the process of working towards potentially reopening within this phase. However, we strongly recommend that states conduct risk assessment to ensure all schools are at a level of compliance and create a monitoring mechanism to assess and monitor this level of compliance. Meanwhile, all daycare and educational institutions to remain closed to in-person classes until this level of risk is assessed. And if there will be opening of schools, it, should, it must be staged and preferably carried out in phases to ensure that this does not pose a risk to the general public and in particular to vulnerable groups that might end up getting infected by students going back home. For religious centers who continue to restrict opening subject to the protocols agreed by respective state governments and FCT, and centers are strongly advised to prioritize multiple services to prevent overcrowding and facilitate a physical distancing. Uh, for recreational facilities and sports, nothing has changed. We have already removed um, restrictions on outdoor communal non-contact sports and the use of recreational parks for supervised physical exercise. For gatherings, including weddings, parties, meetings, etc., we are ex expanding the limit to 50 people preferably outdoors, not in enclosed spaces, and attendees must wear face masks, and they must um, ensure proper sanitization of their hands and maintaining physical distancing. Uh, we will make available uh, th this updated protocol for release to the general public. Uh, we hope that as we continue to progressively open up our economy, uh, the general public will continue to cooperate and comply with us when it comes to the implementation 
of non-pharmaceutical interventions. We cannot afford to go back to where we were before. We have made substantial progress as a country in terms of our COVID response, but we are still in a very risky period. Thank you. Thank you.